Smith will come to the podium uh, and she's going to speak to us about Eve. Right. Amen. a reason for that. Because sometimes you have to acknowledge who you are, where you came from, and what you have been doing. But most of all, I just really truly want to give honor to God who is the head of my life. Give honor to my pastor, Cheryl Dixon, and also give um, honor to Elder Bishnu and his wife, all the mothers in the church. I do give honor, and I thank God for being here before you. And um, when we were praising the Lord, I just thank God because I never knew I'd be able to do this again. But I thank him for that today. Amen. But you know what? But right now, we're going to you know, talk about my sister, my mother, Eve. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, we're going to start off, okay? And I am definitely coming from Genesis. Genesis, second chapter. Starting at the 19th verse through 22. Amen. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and every fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not one found as a helpmate for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead of thereof. And the rib which he had, which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto Adam. So as I said, we're going to talk about Miss Miss Eve today. And my introduction to that is to say this: I'm going to talk about Eve. I'm going to talk about who she was, why, what her purpose was, why she was created, and I'm going to do this because sometimes people we know that she is the one that was created out of out of the rib of Adam. But we need to know this part about that. She was not created from his head. So she could rule over him. That's right. She was not created by the feet so he could trample over her. But he was created from the side. Amen. So he could be under her arm so, so she could be on his arm to be protected and close to his heart to be loved. Yeah. And sometimes we forget about those things and I'm just glad that as I was studying that I, and I was thinking, I was like, they give um, Eve a bad rep sometimes. But you know what? We don't find out what all that is about. Amen? Amen. And the thing that I know about Eve, when I say, they say weakness, but I don't say weakness. I say she failed in her temptation. And that's when the serpent came to her. And he said things to her because we women, come on now, let's be honest and let's be real about being women. And, and, and human being, mankind, we always want something else. We always want that thing that we're not allowed to have. So what she was, so when the serpent approached her about that, and he asked her that question, and he asked her, "What did? So what can you eat?" I'm just gonna. What can you eat? And she said, "Every tree of the garden, but that one tree in the middle." We're not supposed to eat of that. And the reason why they couldn't eat of that is because their eyes, because God said they, well, Satan said, God know your eyes will be open and you would know. So you would be, no, you would become gods. And you would know good from evil. 
How many in here know good from evil? How many participate in both? Come on now, let's be honest about it. Come on now, we participate in both. And I'm going to tell you a little thing about Eve. Eve was a woman with womankind. And because she was created on the side of him to be his mate. So when she when she offered that fruit to Adam, he took it. Because she's his mate. He had no reason to think that she would harm him in any kind of way. So when he, she took that he took that fruit and they knew they were naked. And I just thank God for that because you know what, y'all? I think like this. If Eve wouldn't have ate the, off the tree of life, would you? Would you have? Mm. I mean, it's something to think about, would you? Because we were, born, we were born with a curiosity. We were born with that. And because Eve ate of the tree, we know good from evil. But we're all still born in iniquity. Yes. Amen. Yes. And sometimes we as women, we're not supposed to lead our men. But guess what we do? We're baby. We're baby. You know that ain't right. Don't do that. That car, no, get from under the hood of my car. What are you doing? And so I say this to say this. I don't understand a lot of things that Eve is brought. I'm trying to break it down to certain things. But I just want to let you know that when I was reading about Eve, I seen me and Eve. I seen me and Eve because I disobeyed God. I was tempted and fell into temptation. I got consequences behind that. And Eve did too. Because if you read Genesis 3.16, and this is the consequence she had, and the Lord said to her, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be thy husband, and he shall rule over you. Amen. So when you disobey God, there are consequences. Now, if, if Eve, if Eve had consequences, who are we not to have consequences? Yeah. If Eve had, because she was the first one, but you know who Eve was? Eve was the first woman created and not from a woman. Yeah. She did not come out of the womb of a woman. Yeah. So she was the first woman. She was the first mother of mankind. Yeah. She was the first one to be tempted by the devil and failed in her temptation. But most of all about Eve, Eve had her own mind. She decided. She didn't ask Adam. She didn't run to God. She stood flat-footed and said, well, I'm going to eat this fruit here and I'm going to see what you're talking about. Because if God got all this power, let me see what I can get some of that thing too. You know, I want to see what he got too. I want to see what this is about. So I, I'm not mad at Eve, but you know what I thank her for? Because she did we didn't come in this world blind. You know, she taught us about consequences. And women, I know her child bearing is rough. And because he said it would be sour, I don't think if she would ate the food, it would have been that bad. I'm not sure. But that was her consequences. But I thank God. Thank God that I'm able and to have children. Be able to be a part of what she had to do. Multiply in this world. Had children to come up. Have, have well, husband. Um, had a husband. Didn't work out, but I'm not mad about it because you know what? I didn't know what it was to be a wife. A wife is a, is a help me. You are supposed to walk with him, not try to go over him, and nor let him go over your head either. You know, sometimes what happens is we as women and men of God, what we forget is our place in God. And I'm not just talking about your clothes. I'm talking about what he created you for concerning your mate. He, he created us to have a helpmate. He created us so we wouldn't have to walk this walk alone. But see, we, as Eve did, we with our thick heads, come on now, get a good husband and don't know how to treat him. Get a good wife and don't know how to treat her because we all in whose self. We did not consult God. We don't listen to the word of God. Any marriage that stands, stands because they are in the word of God. They talk about the word of God. My husband acting funny. Let me go to the word of God and find out what I can do to have him act right without disrespecting him and being over his head and troubling over his feet. Let me go to the Bible. Men, because my wife acting like she lost her mind. I don't want to be over her head, but let me go to the word of God and see if he can help me to deal with this and still honor her as my wife. Still praise him as my God. And sometimes we just have to remember those things. But let me tell you one thing. I thank God every day for Eve because she multiplied and she 
Jesus when we don't know how to forgive outside. Yes. And we walk around and we're burning and we hold on to stuff. And you know, you say, well, I don't want to go forgive you, but have you forgiven yourself? Because if you don't forgive yourself, you're not free. And what you do is you make other people wear your burden with your attitude. Wear your burden because you don't want to trust nobody. Wear your burden because you think they're looking at you wrong. Wear your burden because they're talking about your past. Wear your burden because you got a divorce. Wear your burden because you're angry. And you're angry because you haven't forgiven yourself. And let me tell you one thing. And another thing that I love about the Lord, he taught me how to love myself. Love every part of myself. The good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. When I look in the mirror, I may not be happy at everything that I do, but I still love me some me. Because the love of God grows deep on the inside. And somebody told me, you can have compassion and love for everybody else, but if you're not included, it's incomplete. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to hold up because these dynamite preachers behind me, but I just wanted you know, to know a little bit about Eve. She's in the Bible. She's in 2 Corinthians. She's in Timothy. She's in the Bible. She's mentioned, and she's mentioned today. And I want people to, just, to love on her because you know what? She is the, she's a woman of many things. She's the first. She's the first mother. She's the first grandmother. She's the first niece. She's the first. And what I love about her, because she's the first, I have no problem being the first in some things in my life. I don't mind being the first to come out the streets and stand on the corner and say, God is good. Yeah. Amen. I don't have standing in the room of people that's trying to get to where I'm at and say, you know what? Yeah, they have all of these programs. And I don't dismiss them. And I tell them, I say, you, you can get the healing of emotions. You can get the healing of this and the healing. But until you get spiritual tools, you have a problem. Because you can't go back. But I just thank God for that. And I'm thanking all of you for listening. And just remember. Just remember the eat in you. And don't beat yourself up. Because she was the first. And she was put in a garden of beauty. She didn't want for nothing. But folk, just remember when you are blessed with what you got, be grateful for the things that you have. Because sometimes you reach for stuff that ain't for you. And it might be a disrespect and a disobedience to God. And I'm just going to close at this time. I'm asking all of you that knows the word of prayer. Just pray my strength in the Lord that I may carry on with his word. Yeah. Not taking up more time because we got these two dynamite. Lord, can we praise God? Amen. 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 I'm glad you talked about Eve like that because I didn't see Eve like that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I saw Eve as an opportunity. I saw Eve, you had everything that you could think of, but you still were reaching for something you shouldn't have. That's the way I saw Eve. Amen. So we thank God. Amen. Thanks for having me. I guess this relationship is coming with great hat. Let's pray. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. I may not be the youngest on this pulpit, but I'm the baby. I'm back here crying because <laughs> you got this. God's good. I'm going to get on this job for years to have in my life. I give honor to my pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. To, to mother, to elder, to, to my family that's right here, and to my sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. It's true we were given a task today to preach about the bad women in the Bible. Let's bow our heads. Let's ask God to take over right now. Father God, I ask that you use me. 
Surgeon, it would be bad, not meaning bad, but bad meaning good. And my subtitle would be Hold on, your change is coming. I actually turned your Bibles to Joshua um, 2, chapter 2, verse 1. Chapter 2, verse starting at verse 1. And this is the NIV version. Then Joshua said, Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly went, secretly sent two spies from Shittim. Go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. Verse 2. The king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent the message to Rahab, bring out the men who came to you and entered your house, because they have come to spy out the whole land. Stop there. Thank you. And Joshua 2, uh, verse 23. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and gave to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land for even all the inhabitants of the country to country do faint because of us. In the scripture, it describes Rahab as a harlot. So when I looked up the word harlot, it gave the meaning setting forth prostitute, one who accepts money for sexual favors. Reading, I also Rahab also uh, was a, uh, made linen and dyed it. So therefore, Rahab was a Canaanite whore who lived at the entrance in the walls of Jericho. Now, I don't know if y'all know the story about the Israelites being given that land. Uh, it was the promised land that God had promised them. And, 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 and they went through several countries and they had to fight uh, to possess different lands. And Jericho was the promised, uh, uh, Jericho was the promised land. Yes. So, Moses had died, and uh, Joshua was the person to lead them into the city of Jericho. Right. On their journey, Joshua sent. Joshua got smart because they fought many battles before, and Joshua got smart, so he sent men, two men, to go and spy, and they ran into the house of Rahab. Right. Now Rahab again. I, I, I don't want to use the word whore, so I'm going to keep on using the word um, harlot. <laughs> so, um, again, um, 
Okay, she lived at the entrance of the walls in Jericho. So that means she saw everyone coming and going in Jericho, and she gave her service to them. And many of the men told her of the stories and the mercies that they seen God had given the Israelites. I'm going to take you back to the story. Um, when, when, when the king sent for Rahab to uh, know where the men went, she lied to them. She told him she don't know where you went. If you know anything about a, a, a harlot, they are cunning. They have to, you know, do things, some strange things for some change. Right. So they, them, them women are smart. Right. I don't know if in my, in my church we all been a harlot at a time or two. Up uh, wrong church. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, she she went and she hid the men. She she lied first of all to the king to tell him. So she hid the men on the roof of her house, where she uh, I forgot what it was for. That she laid up there to make her silk and things. She hid them up there and gave them uh, and told them to leave after the gates closed after they sent the men out to look for them. Right. So after that, she went up on the roof and spoke with the men. And she said to them, she said, um, she bargained with them. She used her cunning ways to bargain with them. Right. She went back on the roof to the spies. She told them, I know that the Lord has given you Israel. This land, everyone shakes with fear because of you. We heard how the Lord dried up the Red Sea so that you could leave Egypt. She had this, uh, so she made a, a, a bargain with them. She said to them, if I help you out, will you promise me that you'll save me and my family? So they made a promise that, you know, uh, if she hired them and they go back to Joshua and be able to come back and take over the land, that she had to put uh, a red, a red uh, linen on her window and right. make it in the cross. So when she did that, they would know to skip over that house when they come to battle to take over the land. Right. Yep. Right. And doing that, they 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 told her that's what that was the directions that they gave her. Right. And once they told her, if if you any of your family is outside of the house. You know, we're not responsible for their blood. Their blood is on their hands. Right. But everyone in your house, because you have helped us out, we are going to save everyone in your house. Right. So Rahab had a job afterwards. She had to go collect all her family and tell her family. Do you know how hard that is? Now, your family already knows you're, you're a harlot. Yeah. They ain't gonna believe you. <laughs> they, I mean, she had some more work and cunningness to do. So she gathered her father, her sisters, her brothers, her mothers. She gathered them all and told them what the deal was that she had made and let them know that if you want to be saved, you don't yeah. want your life to die, don't go out of my house. Right. That sound familiar, Mommy? Did you tell us don't go outside? <laughs> okay. Um, so, 
Rayhan believed she was a uh, Greek Jew. I'm getting ahead of myself. Keep going. So, um, again, I mean, once they came to uh, Jericho to tear down the wall, her family was saved. The, the, the reason for her putting the um, scarlet that the red, and it had to be red, it was in remembrance of the blood of Jesus. And Rahab believed and she was received into God's covenant. She left her merciless, merciless life and found peace for her entire family by welcoming the spies. Amen. It was not by chance that the spies found Rahab's house. Yeah. It was God's plans from the beginning. Yeah. Her legacy is God will save anyone yes. God does not restrict his grace yes. to a certain nation. He is willing to accept anyone when they have the faith yes. and courage to seek him. My Bible tells me in Ezekiel 36, uh -huh. 26, and I will give you a new heart yes. and a new spirit. Yes. I will remove the heart of the stone. Ephesians 4, put off your old self yeah. to be made new. Second Corinthians, if anyone in Christ, if anyone be in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone. In the end, Rahab was rewarded for her faith and courage. We too have value in God's eyes, and our faith and courage can also be rewarded. I'm going to stop right there. Amen.